who utilize the software what it read some minimum quality standards what it's to have a good usability what it's to has a good performance and also want it to read some very good security standards on the other hand who develops the software wants to deliver the best product as possible and if it's so why we still have so many problems with software delivery one approach that could reduce this distance through the expectation of the quality expected by software users and who developed the software are the verifications techniques and it includes the whole test techniques that can be employed for verification of the quality of a software product and the lack of adoption of tests techniques is often based on cultural standards from organizations so people are not used to employ some test technique but you can be different you can develop a software with quiet it does not depends from anyone just from you a very basic structure for preparing your software to be tested is adopting the triple a standard why triple a first you need to arrange what it means each test to provide the proper output it needs not only some specific inputs responsible for producing producing that output but also preparing the environment the specific context that the use case need to be for giving certain inputs produce so, some specific outputs and then we can perform the verif verification we want to so first point arrange first a the second a is the act what it means it means call the current implementation we have for this proposal so the act for acting is just call the implemented functionality so you having have nothing to do in special here just then placing the proper parameters and set up before calling some implementation you will have have and then the last a is the assert what that means it means then you need to take the output for your function for created when you have called that and compare that with the expected output then we are asserting so when adopting this triple a methodology we then uh, can follow a very specific good practice for introducing the testing q3 inside our product and some some testing procedures to be executed periodically before maybe and before every software delivery then avoiding new errors and write good tests means we need to follow some good practice that will help us that these tests will contribute to the quality of, of the product and the overhead it may provide to the project is lower expensive than its contributions so let's see some of these practice one of them is that the tests need to be small what that means be small means it needs to be um, to cover a, a very little part of the code normally a functionality and this functionality needs to provide some kind of of result to the product product itself so how small this functionality need to be 
to have when individual tests developed to that is a very good question. So normally you need to look for functions that will contribute for your main use case, and then um, it's feasible to evaluate if it's providing the proper results. So deciding um, the granularity of your tests is a very important point for the successful employment of test techniques. Another very important point when we are developing these small tests that normally are named unit tests is that these tests need to be independently. It means that some external dependencies should not affect the testing procedure. So it means if your functionality demands some external system that you need some network access to that, if you need to go out from your software to evaluate data in a certain database, all of these examples are external dependencies. We need to avoid that. And how we can test the software without having the whole dependence? Of course, testing the dependencies is also important, but in a first step, the initial step is test it by itself. And then this external dependence may be replaced with some kind of structures that simulates its existence. And then we can have, for instance, the mock objects or also the stubs. That are two kind of, of best practice that um, could provide to your functionality that's being tested the outputs it will be expecting for some external dependence simulating that, but um, without in demanding that this external dependence is going to be available in the exactly moment you are executing your tests. Another point that looks simple, but it's not so, is that every test needs to be deterministic. What means a deterministic test? It means that giving a certain input the expected output need just to be some, some output that was previously defined. So if we provide the same inputs, we need to receive always the same output. It should not happen that we provide the same inputs and then one time we have one output, another time we have another output. It's not good, it's not feasible for testing. So all the test needs to be deterministic. It looks simple, but there's a complexity reading behind this principle that the tests need to always initiate with a certain predefined test database. It means many functionalities for, for be feasible to be tested, they are expecting some some information that are probably stored somewhere. So we need hours to start from this point. If after providing some carry in some service or database with specific parameters, we expected to receive 10 items in the result. It needs to be 10, not nine, not 11, 10. And for having this output, we can have the ensure that giving certain inputs, we are going to receive it exactly 10 items in the output. We are expecting one specific data set that will provide this output that was previously validated. So we cannot having our database varying in the initial stage of each test round. We need to always set up the same test database for beginning all the tests. And then there is another challenge that could be a challenge, but also is a very good practice that we have this control. Because let's suppose you develop the functionality for your team, and then it was written a test for that. And the test has passed it, and everything was OK. But in some point in the future, this functionality was changed. And then when the functionality is changed, the tests for validating that also need to, to be changed. So it's some kind of 
traceability matrix. We need to identify when we have to change some specific functionality and then some specific pieces of code in our code. We also need to update the tests. Otherwise, the tests will not be will not match anymore with the implementation. So it looks logical, but if we don't have a change management uh, with a minimal maturity level, it could happen that you, you, you or your team or someone will update the code and will let the code with some old validations. Of course, a good test will identify that and say, now I don't pass anymore. Now the provided inputs or outputs are not matching because something was changed. Another important factor is that you need to believe that it will produce not only a better software quality, but also will or could at least increase the speed of your development, the speed of your deliverables. Because in one first blick, code looks like now I'm writing tests and then now, now we need more work, more effort, more costs to produce some, to deliver something. In the other hand, Okay, you have employed more effort there to develop not only the functionality, but also the tests for this functionality. Okay, but now when you need to promote some modification in your code, you can faster deliver that in the production environment because you can test again very faster. So you have more confidence before every new deliverable because you can focus just in testing this new functionality because all the previous functionalities were already tested by the automated tests. So um, maybe in the first deliverable, if you are writing the test concomitantly, you maybe need more time for that. But after that, all the new deliverables could be very and we feel better quality. So ideas when we talk about DevOps and, and we are creating resources for developers deploy easily in the introduction of new products. They expected some kind of aut automation from tests and then having the software validated before being automatically deployed in some new environment. So maybe you is one excellent software developer that is watching this video. And of course, how better the developer is, less or no error maybe is introduced in the code is produced by these people or this person or the group that works with excellence. But then you need to think, of course, by you, other people may take that in the future. And how better you program, how better you develop your software, easier is to write tests from that. So good developers develop a project that's easier to be tested because the functionalities are breaking in small parts. The, the code is very clear what, what it's going to provide. So talking again about this triple A standard, the whole arrange and assert is facilitated because we have a simple act. So good developers produce a software easier to be tested. So, if in your company or in the product you develop, you should not use any kind of test technique. Don't wait. The others start to promote this kind of change. You can be the change you are expecting.